Greetings. Hello. Yes, still here. Um, I wanted to do a, a, a quick quick video. To, I say I always do. It's, it's almost never quick when I get rambling. But uh, I wanted to talk about a few things today because there are different things that aren't hockey related that I want to talk about. And I want to start off with AEW signing the big show. So there's this whole narrative that's driving me insane. All AEW does is sign all the, the, the cast offs from WWE. And that's all the show is, and it's just like WCW. It's not. It really isn't. Uh, your tag team champions are the Young Bucks. How many WWE titles did they have? None. Kenny Omega's the champ. Never in WWE as Kenny Omega and, and not with what he's become. Uh, and Darby Allen, who they're building up to be a one of the next stars. Never a WWE guy. Uh, Hangman Adam Page. They're building him up. The WWE stars that have come in have basically been used to add credibility to these other wrestlers, which is completely different than what happened in WCW. WCW was all about, hey, let's get Hulk Hogan and Roddy Piper fighting again. Hey, remember that Hogan Savage thing? That was great. We should do that again. We haven't seen that same rehash. You, you can't compare John Moxley and what he's doing there to what Hulk Hogan did in, in WCW. Hulk Hogan just took his character, his name, everything, and just took it to WCW. John Moxley was Dean Ambrose in WWE. There is no comparison between what he's doing now and what he was doing in WWE. They're not at all the same character. Bringing in Big Show. Big Show hasn't won a match in years. People talk about how he always oh, a face, he's a heel, he's a face, he's a heel. That's because at any given point in time, WWE was using him to get people over. So... And, and Big Show said this himself on, there was a, a, a Stone Cold um, Broken Skull Ranch session that was great. And I, I really garnered, that really, that really to me, it, it gained a lot of respect from me towards Big Show and for what he's done. When he basically said, look, I never win a match and I'm not out there to win a match. I'm out there to make everybody look good. I'm out there to try to get guys over because I'm big. I can make other people bigger stars just by his physical size. He's being... Uh, propped up as an announcer. He will do great work as an announcer. He is still young enough. He can get in the ring here and there. I don't think they give him the title. I don't think this is about giving him a massive push. It's sort of like Sting. Sting, it's it's really, it's just, it's this tour of nostalgia and it's great. And Sting's not threatening for a title either. He's, he's making stars out of guys like Ricky Starks and Brian Cage. And that's what the veterans do. The veterans aren't supposed to come back and squash people. The veterans are supposed to come in and, and add legitimacy to the other guys that are there. Because here's the other option. Let's say AEW didn't sign any of them. Didn't sign Miro. Didn't bring in Luke Harper as Brody Lee. Didn't bring in any of them. Just said, no, we're going to keep all the indies. The same people that are complaining now and saying, well, they do a on WWE guys, would be complaining and saying, all it is is indie trash. And even the WWE rejects won't go there. So there isn't a way of winning. People who don't like AEW, they're not going to because they've got this idea that it's some kind of a turf war when it really isn't. It, it really isn't. Um, what I like that AEW is doing as well is that they're working with other companies. They're working with Impact. The whole crossover with Impact would be much better if we weren't going through a pandemic. Let's be honest. Then you could have a full-on invasion both ways and you could have crowds going completely bonkers at seeing what's going on. But it's still, it's fun and seeing that, you know, New Japan being involved as well. It's just, it's great. All these companies working together right now is fantastic. And so as this year rolls along, I think that's going to get even bigger. And having a guy like Paul White there, it just changes things, you know? And I expect Selena Vega to show up there. I expect Aleister Black to end up there. I expect to see some guys there. And not all of them are old and washed up. That was one of the things with guys going to WCW. They couldn't go anymore. The guys who were going to WCW from WWE back in the mid-90s, they couldn't really wrestle like they used to. And the guys who were left behind in WWE were much better and much superior. And the, the wrestling on the WCW shows was being propped up by the cruiserweights. The cruiserweights were often the best part of the show. I used to watch Nitro for the cruisers. I would watch it for Chris Jericho, the cruiserweights, and then I would just turn it off. I didn't care what the NWO was doing. I didn't care about any of that. I thought the NWO was ridiculously big. I thought the whole thing was overrated. I would just watch the cruiserweight matches and then I'd turn over to see what was going on with Raw. So 
I, I don't see that with AEW at all. I really haven't. And, and like Matt Hardy comes in. Matt Hardy could have come in and I, I want creative control and I'm, I want to go for the title. No. What's he doing? He's building up private party. And he's he's reinvented his character again, and and he's he's leading Private Party. He had he had some great matches as well, some scary looking matches with Sammy Guevara, but he also helped make a star out of Sammy Guevara as well. So I I think it's great, and the whole inner circle thing is is clearly going to make MGF MJF the ultimate villain. So yeah, it's it, it's not comparable. Bringing in these guys. It's not comparable. Miro comes in. What does he do? He works with Kip Sabian. Clearly, at some point, he's going to turn on Kip Sabian or vice versa. But it's also Penelope Ford's being being brought up as well with all this. So I like it. The the one misstep, one misstep, I will admit, Nyla Rose should not have defeated Britt Baker. Britt Baker should be on her way to a massive feud with Hikaru Shida. That would be absolutely lights out. Fantastic. I think you could build up uh, a tremendous storyline there and you know abaddon could still be hanging around in the background with that so yeah um that's my my whole wrestling shtick at this point um i've been watching the scotty's tournament of hearts a little bit at night um got to admit i've been uh, taking a peek at what's going on with women's curling because we didn't have that last year i don't think they had the scotties at all last year and this year it's different because uh, it's a much bigger tournament than normal because again you're not going to have the provincials you're just going to have the big national tournament and uh, it's nice to see Jennifer Jones is still the best at her job. Uh, it, it is insane how many years pass and Jennifer Jones is still kind of the best at it. So that was fun to watch and, and has been fun to watch. Uh, I even joked to my wife. I said, can you imagine if I had little magnets for curling rocks and I did like a, a review like I do of hockey with curling? That would both be the greatest thing and the worst thing ever put in video. So I'm not going to rule it out. I'm going to say I don't think I end up doing that at some point, but maybe in 2022, maybe you see that happen. And of course, that'd be here, not on the Hockey Channel. I would not throw that on the Hockey Channel unless it was by accident. But now that I've said it, I'd better not do it by accident because nobody would believe it was an accident. Um, I also want to say that yesterday I watched The Clove Hitch Killer. I don't often watch movies. I don't really have much time. And if I'm going to watch a movie by myself, it's probably going to be more adult fare, more uh, R-rated, which means that, um, you know, not something for, for kids. So I have to make sure that, you know, Adelaide's not going to be walking through and saying, oh, well, no, his head just fell off. That's what happens when you get older. I, you know, I don't want to have to try to explain some of that stuff. Uh, Clove Hitch Killer is a good movie that that's on the verge of being a great movie. First off, uh, if you're going to cast somebody as a villain and you're not really quite sure whether or not he's the villain... Make sure you're not casting an actor who every single thing he's in forever, he looks like the villain. Even when he's not, he looks like the villain. So if you haven't seen the movie, I recommend it. I'm not going to spoil it here, but the idea is that this kid knows there's a serial killer and he's pretty sure it's his dad. And so he's kind of hooking up with this girl. He's not really hooking up. They don't really hook up, but they you kind of get the feeling. I don't know. That was weird, right? Um... Because at points in the movie, I'm like, so are they, they saying the character is Greg Gay? Or what are they what are they saying here? But they don't really get into that. I, I thought the characters could have been a little more fleshed out than they were. Um, I thought there was there was an alarming twist towards the end. Uh, and if you've seen the movie, you'd know what I'm, what I'm talking about. Where I thought, there's somebody who's in peril and could potentially die. And... Our heroes in question don't seem to be particularly concerned. And it's one of those movies that if somebody had just phoned the police at certain points of the movie, you probably could have saved a lot of time and suffering. But, uh, and, and, I, and I wasn't sure either if they were throwing in a teaser about whether or not our, our main hero in this might end up being a killer himself at some point. Uh, and, and so... Yeah, there were also things too they teased throughout the movie that I was like, oh, I can't wait for that scene where they're going to show us what they're talking about. They're not going to show us what they're talking about. Was it not in the budget, or do they just do they just want me to picture it, or they just, so we're just going to go with the drawing and they're not going to show us? So again, it was a good movie. I enjoyed most of it. 
Um, I, I did kind of see, like, there were a couple of twists here, and I was like, okay, so that's what's going to end. Yep, that's what happened. There you go. But it it tries. It's a movie that tries. It is something different. Um, I, I saw it uh, basically described as a horror movie on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know that I would qualify it as a horror movie. I would qualify it more as a... I, I mean, if I say psychological thriller, people are going to think of like movies like Mama or The Grudge or something with, with jump scares. And there's no jump scares in this. There's none. Uh, proving that jump scares are completely overrated and they're not necessary to actually build tension in a movie. They're just aggravating. It's just stuff just jumping at the screen for no reason a lot of the time. Uh, and, and yeah, this movie didn't have that. Had some really good performances. But again, uh, when they reveal the serial killer, and you go, oh, uh, which was kind of my reaction. And there were points where I was like, well, that's not what he'd do in that situation. That's not what he'd do in that situation. That's not what she'd do in that situation. That's That was my one problem, was trying to figure out character motivations in certain points of the movie. But it was good. So again, and, and that's that's the thing. You, you kind of have to overlook some of these things in certain movies to say, all right, it's good. I know what they were going for. And uh, you just sort of, sort of plow through it. So that's what I did. I just thought, all right, I'm gonna plow through this. I'm gonna watch a movie for a change. And uh, here I am talking to you, all you fine people, about the Clove Hitch Killer, which again, wasn't, you know, I. It's not a movie that's gonna, you know, win awards because it came out in 2018. So it already would have won them if it was going to. But uh, yeah, it it was it was it was good for what it did, and it was something different. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I'll talk to you again soon.